So, if you look at the human body, we have teeth, a tongue, a throat, a stomach, intestine, along with other organs that aid us in the digestion of food and water. So, it makes sense that like other beings on our planet, we need to eat to live. What if I told you that some believe that's not entirely true? What if I told you that not only do you not need to eat food, but you do not need to drink water either? You would call me crazy, but that is exactly what people are out there doing. There are people who practice this as a lifestyle. They are the breatharians. I like to discuss topics that are way out there, subjects to get you thinking. Having a clear understanding of what is being talked about does not excite you. It is only when you don't understand something that you are intrigued. Does anyone know what the number one cause of death is among humans? It's belief. I'll say that again. Belief is the number one cause of death among humans. Why? because of the beliefs of others. How many wars have been fought because of what people believe? How many terrorist attacks have occurred because of what people believe in? Jesus died because he believed in something. Jews died because they believed in something. Martin Luther King Jr. died because he believed in something. Folks, I could go on and on with this. You see, Whenever someone experiences something new, that creates excitement, or it creates anxiety. It scares them, and it shows, sometimes with opposing aggression and violence. What these breatharians are doing scares other people, because other people don't understand why breatharians do what they do. Now, fasting is not beyond our understanding. It is a common health practice among many. It is about the elimination of toxins from the body to purify the blood. Some consider it to be emotionally and spiritually enlightening as well. Depending on the fast, the duration could be anywhere between three days to a little over a month. The breatharian takes this concept to a whole different level. So here's the idea. For the majority of people, the food that they eat and the water that they drink is most often loaded with toxins. These toxins, if they are not expelled from the body quickly, are stored in the body's tissue, namely the fat cells. Your body doesn't know what to do with these remaining toxins, so it shoves them inside the fat cells to keep them from re-entering the bloodstream. This is why people develop that gut with love handles as they age. The reason the body does this is because it cannot eliminate the toxins in a timely manner. If it just left those toxins in the bloodstream, you would probably die. If you stop eating, this eventually activates ketosis and your body begins to purge these toxins out of your body. Now, if you're someone who has never done this before after years of loading your body with toxins, you're probably going to get sick. This is called a healing crisis because the toxins have to re-enter the bloodstream to be filtered out. So, you're going to feel ill for a little while doing this. People consider this to be withdrawal symptoms from not eating, but the end results are quite rewarding. You see, the only time your body has a chance to get rid of these toxins is when you sleep, just a few hours. And then you wake up and go right back to eating. You go right back to loading toxins into your body. This keeps the body in a constant state of dis-ease. And what happens is that people get used to it. This is why people say, I forgot what it was like to feel good until I did a fast. After the fast, the idea is to maintain a healthy diet until the next fast or cleansing. 
but breatharians say nope i'm going to stop poisoning my body once and for all by not eating at all now many breatharians will admit that they do in fact still eat food on occasion but they describe it as being an act of will rather than out of hunger many claim they don't ever feel hungry so they look at eating as something they want to do rather than have to do interestingly enough even though there is an initial loss of weight the body stabilizes and begins to draw energy from the air and the sun this is what strikes up disbelief and has baffled scientists to this day many breatharians are practitioners of pranic yoga an ancient form of eastern meditation in fact a lot of them believe their lifestyle to be very spiritually enlightened and that it opens up the body's chakras enabling them to reach a state of nirvana eventually leading them to transcend to the fifth dimension now not eating is one thing but there are breatharians who don't drink water either if this is true then is it possible for the body to sustain itself by other means is this another life hack can we really tap into the other energies like the sun and the air and use mind over matter to maintain a healthier existence now i know somebody's going to say oh man that's bullshit where are you a moron and this brings us right back to the point i was making about beliefs and these opposing beliefs are what cause breatharians to retreat to a life of isolation not only is it difficult to live a normal life in the population not eating and drinking think about having to deal with the opinions and opposition from others around you especially from those who care about you eh, it's just a crazy loony kooky co they probably get down with blood orgies and all that man well i'm pretty sure that people have and do use breatharianism to create and lead their own cult following I've seen breatharians charge millions of dollars to learn their secrets. Millions. But before you judge, is it crazier to charge millions of dollars for something like this or is it crazier to pay millions of dollars for something like this? This is not for everyone, folks, and it's certainly not for me. I enjoy eating way too much. I'm all for a healthy fast or cleansing. but to cut out eating and drinking all together damn that i think people should be able to be happy doing what they choose to do and spend their money on whatever they want then someone says how come they don't give that money to those starving kids in africa huh how how come they don't teach them how to live without eating well for one there is a big difference between starving because you want to and starving because there's no food the ones who claim to be the true masters of breatharianism claim that they haven't eaten or drank anything for years i don't know maybe there is something to this lifestyle maybe it is a path to a higher existence i guess i'll never know because i have absolutely no plans to stop eating and i sure as hell have no plans to spend millions of dollars to find out